Welcome to Fulham Fix, the first official Fulham podcast with myself, Ivan Berry. And myself, Felix White. First up, we've got to address that uh, our theme tune, man. Because it's <laughs> let's be honest, it's it's not often you get someone that's had a number one album write the uh, the theme music for the podcast, man. We feel honoured. But tell us just quickly about putting that together, because there's some amazing bits of commentary there. That's very kind of you to say, Ivan. Um, to take people back in a past life. Mm. I was in a band called the Maccabees mm. and they used to like in the early days, they used to get me on sports shows because they found out you like Fulham and yeah. the press people were trying to get you involved in stuff. And there was a few shows where they used to play Maccabees music with commentary over the top. And really? I being on, um, I think it was Colin Murray's show and they played just like a montage of Dempsey moments over Pelican by the Maccabees. And I remember thinking that is the best thing. I've ever heard. You so, must have been so emotional at that point, having your two worlds collide like that. Well, exactly. This is why I thought it was the best thing I've ever heard. So I thought when you asked me to do the full and fix with yourself, I thought, mate, maybe that's what we should do for music. So we've been compiling for the last month the most precious full and moments in commentary. I've yeah. cut them all up and we've made a song out of it. And I, I actually, I've got to say, it sounds musical. It sounds like lyrics to me. It's, it's, yes, without a doubt. <laughs> without a yeah. doubt, it sounds great. And there's so many beautiful moments, so many iconic moments. I'm, I'm reckoning right now that people listening are going to be getting those goosebumps, going to be getting those chills at certain bits of those commentary. And what I like about it, you've got the really iconic moments from the Europa League, um, some big moments in the Premier League, some stuff from history. I know you've you, you, uh, you you've thrown in a few cheeky ones from, from deep past. Mm. And uh, I just think there's going to be a number of people that just go, it's the I love Fulham from Gentleman Jim right at the end. Yeah, you remember that so well. That's mad. When is that? That's a championship. Goal, that was that was a uh, Norwich. Yeah, it was Norwich, and we we were down to were we down to ten men? I think we were at that point, and we were winning two one. Floyd, yeah, Floyd made it three one. That yeah, was and it. his emotions became too much. Can yeah. I, I'll, I'll leave because people I'm listening might want to feed back their own like memories from the moments in that song. Yeah, but the one that I love yeah. is Macquarie because I can't <laughs> believe that that commentary exists. Yeah, because when I grew up as a young kid, that you, people used to sing it. You put the ball in the Carlisle net when we got promoted from bottom tier and so it's a really mythical moment that Macquarie so I can't believe that there was actually commentary of it yeah and we just snuck in a Macquarie yeah anyway so I'm buzzing man and it's nice to have that music set it up <laughs> it's mate, so you know good, what I'm happy to do it with you oh go on mate go because on. you've been closer to the action of what's happened at Fulham than almost anyone in the last 10 years even managers even players that have come <laughs> in and out haven't been on the touchline for as long as you have and watched it all unfold because for people that don't know people will know but Ivan's the match announcer at the cottage so it must have been like you've probably seen more here <laughs> from closer range than anybody else oh man I've never I, do you know what like now you've said it I've never had it said out loud like that but yeah I mean it's true though isn't it I guess so I've stood probably in that dugout longer than any ma- we've never had a manager go Certainly past longer than Felix McGat. Well, yeah. Well, that so he was who I started <laughs> and with. Ready, Wollenstein. Yeah. Well, good God. Unfair dismissal. Anyway, it, I think on. it was a little bit. Yeah. But um, no, I, I, uh, yeah. Now you say it, <laughs> it, it is a bit bizarre. And I did start. Felix McGat was how I started. So I didn't know a Fulham victory. For, I remember when I actually started on the mic, and you know, I had my script for the first time. I'm sort of going through it. And then I remember when we won a game and it was about 10 games into the season or something ridiculous like that, a home game. And I, I remember saying, I don't know how to announce a victory. I've never done it. Wow. All I've been doing is announcing. Oh, really? Yeah. F- Fulham losing. Yeah, yeah, and we, yeah. was, we were rock bottom of the table. I remember, I mean, it was an absolute shambles. And, I, and every time I used to walk sort of through the old Riverside at the point, because that's where the old media box was. Sure. People used to stop me and say, hey, can't you have a word with Felix? Can't you do this? And I'm thinking... I don't, I don't know what I've got myself into. Oh, so that's when it started. It was, that yeah, was my first really season. Millwall time. was my first, uh, my first game. So you were concerned that you would, you had somehow cursed Fulham <laughs> for like I six mean, months. It wasn't looking good. Yeah. I'd started doing Fulham TV with Vic uh, Hope, who's now, right. uh, she's at the drive time on, on BBC uh, Radio 1. And, uh, and we started doing these like Fulham TV bits on match days and we got relegated. Right. And yeah, and straight away, it, it didn't look good for me, man. I looked like a bit of a curse. I'm but not... since you've obviously, I'm talking about you like you're the chairman now, but you've overseen yeah, yeah, two yeah, yeah. promotions. Yeah, sure. That's me. Yeah, yeah. Two, what, you two promotions, three promotions back into the Prem? In your three. Time? For the benefit of tape, Jeff is saying. Yeah, Jeff. Thank, thank God Jeff's here. So you've had it... a bit of a crazy time, really, haven't you? Like, because you've seen a lot of like sort of up and down and mad roller coaster stuff at Fulham. Before I, before, I took the, before I took the job, my first game, I was 13. It was uh, Division Three, and all I've known is a Fulham team that got better and better and more successful yeah. and grew and grew. 
and you know eventually Premier League for 13 years you know I, I joined in that final season the Premier League and all I've known is basically up and down up and down yeah yeah you know and now to see us where we are now in the Premier League yeah. established yeah. you know playing beautiful football yeah. you know players like you know I mean we, we've got to touch on this season now man because it's it, unbelievable but players like you know Tim Ream who for, for most people would have said okay you know he's going to be featuring off the bench this season you know well, you give him another give him another year on a contract whatever give him a couple of years because we had a blistering you know last season in the championship with him and to have him feature in every single game yeah, playing out of his skin just mm. unbelievable and how much of that is down to to the setup we've got here to the to, to Marco Silva the performance he's getting out of these players William as well yeah yeah that's really I just as you were saying that it just struck me that Tim Ream is quite a sort of Simon Morgan-ish character. Remember, as mm. you alluded to, getting promoted up through the leagues, I remember feeling like, oh, Simon Morgan's the consistent thread when all these players are coming in around him type thing. And it just yeah. adds me to think, oh, Tim Ream sort of has been that, hasn't he? Yeah. And TC, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, but- it's, been a, it's been a magical time. And uh, marked by just the last thing I'll say about your match announcing is your tone of voice when Cabano came on a pitch <laughs> last week, I've never heard anyone so happy over oh, a PA in my life. I love Cabano. I, and I think a lot of people were sure, and certainly with conversations with people at Fulham, that you, we weren't necessarily sure we would see him again this season. And of course, he's out of contract. Yeah. You know, we don't know. You just you don't know what's going to happen. He's a wonderful, incredible player. Certainly his career's not over, but... Um, and he's so a, he's to, a future to guest, isn't he? Because I feel like you've got an affinity with him. I've, just... I've chatted to him in the past and he's always a joy. Like, right. he's always a joy. And, um, yeah, and to then have him come back on and, and uh, you know, with, with enough games left that he can he can sort of get back, you know, get stuck in again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, he's brilliant, man. Absolutely lovely. I, I, need, I want to turn to you firstly, though, before before we get to anything else, because, you know, you, you've... you've uh, you sort of spoken about me and my role at the club, you know... I think a lot of people were turned on to your music because, you know, you're Fulham fans. You're like, oh, the Mac- Maccabees are, you know, certainly self Felix, you're a Fulham fan. So we got into the Maccabees. I want you to know I was listening to the Maccabees before I found out you were a Fulham fan. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You, you're gobsmacked. No, I know. You? I remember meeting you and yeah. you running up to me and saying, I remember showing you my that. wallet. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, I wasn't. You did. I, I think you had a season ticket, didn't you? So that's you right. Me, it was like you, it was like I wouldn't believe you. So you showed me. Your season yeah. Well, ticket. I figured. Yeah. You know. Well, the thing is, <laughs> when you meet other Fulham fans, you get yeah. excited. Yeah. And I hadn't started on the mic at all yet. I, I hadn't even. You know. This no, was, I was just that. a purely a fan season ticket holder. Yeah. And we were both at this uh, some 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 sort of music event. I think it was it was photography at a clash or something. That's yeah. right. That's right. Something like that. And I clocked you, and I'm like, you know, hey, I'm a Fulham fan. Check out my wallet. And I think we spent a lot of the time talking about Musa Dembele. Yeah, that was glory. Yeah, yeah. Was that Martin Yol's Musa Dembele? It, was, it would have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he just. We were like, "How great is he?" You know, we, we're hoping, and we kept like. I think we kept saying to each other, "Gotta keep it down. Gotta whisper it because other other teams are going to be onto him." Oh right, it, yeah. it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a very good segue, that <laughs> because uh, Musa Dembele is obviously one of the greats that's ever played at Fulham. Absolutely. And Martin Yol was in charge for a period of time mm. when Dembele was at the club, and while that was happening. The man we were about to speak to, the pro to, he was in trance, cajoled to come to Fulham Football Club. Yeah. And as we make very clear to him, we weren't used to having players of calibre no. of Dimitar Berbatov at Fulham Football Club at that time. And do you know what was really interesting but when I come on the show is that I don't know if I'd really heard him speak that much. Mm. So before we've done this, obviously so like you build up all these ideas of who he is in your head, but he did a very short interview at Fulham. And even at United and Spurs, I don't think um, we heard much conversation from Dimit- Dimitar Berbatov. And, was, no. you know, there was a keep calm pass in the ball shirt, some beautiful goals, some real moments. So before he came on, we were both a bit like, I'm not sure what he's, is he going to be very cold? Yeah. Is he going to be talkative at all? Is he going to be shy, arrogant? We really didn't know, did we? It was a bold choice, I think, to go with the kind of... Uh to go with Dimitar Berbatov as, as the launch of the pod because it could have fallen flat on its face because like you said, he, he's not a big talker. Uh, and, you know, even at his time at Fulham, I think speaking to people here was saying like he, they used to have arguments trying to get him to do anything. And I think he probably spoke to Fulham on camera, any of the press, any of the social stuff yeah. for a maximum of like five minutes. Like he, yeah, yeah. He, he did next to nothing in the time he was here. Exactly. And... Then, but then you think you're looking back at Man United and, and Tottenham, and you think, no, actually, 
did he do anything anywhere? Like he, he really is a bit of an enigma. And that's why I think it was f so exciting for us, but it was certainly a kind of a- uh, I was nervous. I was, <laughs> I was actually nervous when I met him. I yeah. didn't realize how nervous I was gonna be. It was nerve wracking. <laughs> to be in his presence. Because, yeah. because he is, he, he is world-class. Yeah. He is one of, you know, we've had a, I would say we've had a handful of uh, truly world-class players at Fulham. Yeah. Like ones where you go, yeah, you are world-class. Totally. And he's up there. As a, and, and like you said, no one, I think, expected him yeah. to come to Fulham. And so, you know, to ha then have him back, you know, we were able to meet up with him and, and, you know, have him on the fix. But I think, I think, I don't know, I don't want to predetermine it too much, but just, let's just say it was a total joy and he was incredible. And we spoke about all the precious little moments that Fulham fans want to know about. He was like really candid, actually, at some times. He said things that he would have re regretted. Mm. He wished he'd done more talking and that kind of thing. Yeah. But we should probably just throw to it, shouldn't we? I think so. And I think um, um, what's nice, just just quickly, is you told me just before we went in to meet him and chat to him, yeah. you were like, oh, you know, when I was um, out celebrating, basically, you know, my success with the Maccabees. No, I didn't use that phrase when I was <laughs> out right, celebrating my success with the Maccabees. He, did, he didn't say that. I mean, he said when I was out, you know, <laughs> celebrating platinum on album on Pom, platinum album. No. Yeah. No, you I phrased it in probably a, in, a, in a, when I was out getting drunk <laughs> yeah, yeah, in my that's, getting that's drunk it. days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was out celebrating my multi-platinum success with the Maccabees, yeah. um, I used to, the way I, you know, I used to get, have a few drinks with me and I used to, with my, you know, Black Mark, because you would have been a, a, you know, certainly, a, you know, wandering around with the Black Mark having to sign loads of things, I would have thought. No, I don't know. That would have, you, well, you, no, I wouldn't keep, well, one, I wouldn't tell everyone I'm out <laughs> celebrating my success with the Maccabees. And secondly, I wouldn't keep a permanent marker on me or in case you wanted anything signed, <laughs> the the reason I would have the story, was, so don't throw me under the bus with that. Sorry, the story mate. Story was be uh, like we'd be getting smashed because at, at that certain age, Berbatov was at the cottage, and yeah. I'd be buzzing with the idea that Berbatov was playing at Fulham, and yeah. it aligned with the ideas of George Best or Bobby Moore Definitely, or Johnny yeah, yeah, Haynes, yeah. where you have these real greats at the cottage, which I, I didn't feel like we'd really seen at that point. So when <laughs> I was at a certain state, yeah. I decided that it would be fun thing to do occasionally on nights out to write Dimitar Berbatov on people that didn't know who he was necessarily on their faces, on yeah. their arms, that kind of thing. Anyway, you encouraged me to tell him that anecdote. We didn't know how that was going to land. Landed relatively well. Yeah, and I think that set the tone for the rest of the uh, the interview. Dimitar Berbatov, welcome to the Fulham Fix. Uh, first up, I mean, we might as well touch on what we're talking about there. You know, we've just had a, you've had a message from someone saying, say hello to the special one. What are we calling you? We're calling you the, the special one. Are we calling you Berber? Well. Dimitar, what are we going with? Listen, uh, that was a nice, nice nickname to have. That's a good sound to it. The special one. Yeah, but it's, it's not that something that I came up with. You ask Sarah about it, not me, you know. Uh, but in the end of the day, it's about the friendship you forge in a club, you know, and the names you call each other are signs of respect, probably, mm. you know, and I always had special connection with the people who work for Fulham. I had a great time here having a, a, a good laugh when we need to laugh, a serious work when we need to work, you know, some wins, some losses along the way. But overall, it was a great experience for me, honestly. Do you remember it well, the time at Fulham? <laughs> come on. I always love coming back here. That's why I'm here today. Yeah, man. I mean, it's if beautiful. I didn't like it, I would never come. Didn't need to come. Yeah, for sure. So I always uh, cherish my memories with my clubs, but some clubs are, are like uh, where, where, where you, you needed to go at the time. You, and you just found that it's, it's good to be there when I was here, you know, and yeah. I never regret my choice because in the end of the day, uh, it's London, one of the best cities in the world, mm. the neighborhood when I was used to live, uh, Fulham as a club, because I always said to everybody around here back in the day, you have everything around here to be a big club. You right. are, but you need to be bigger than what you think you are. You have the, everything you need. And now seeing Fulham flying in the Premier League. I know, mate. And yeah. like, oh my we God. Are you know, I was, I was telling you about that when I was here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you keeping in touch with it? You watch them play this year? Of course, I'm watching playing. And because, for example, Mitrovic is Serbian and I'm Bulgarian. Yes. So right. uh, even, even that uh, we don't know each other personally, personally, I, I still see Serbian, Croatian like, like brothers because we are yeah, next to each other. Sure. We are next to each other as, as countries. And when you have someone like this in a club that I used to play, it's, it makes it even more special. And I watch the games and when, when I see the goals last time, last game against Brighton and we yeah, score yeah. in the last, pretty Smashing much last grab. Minute, 
And this is how you do it sometimes. Yeah. You don't play pretty pretty football at times. You don't play well, but you score one goal. Thank you very much. Three points. Yes. And you're flying in the table. Time to day. You know, because, and, and why I'm saying this? Because when I was here, I was moaning about everyone. We should do more. Oh, really? Always achieve and strive for more. Yeah. You know, and even moaning about the stadium. You should expand, expand. And now the stadium is getting yeah, better and bigger, right? Riverside now, yeah. Now's the time. Would you, I mean, how much, would, how would you enjoy playing for Fulham right now? One of my regrets is that not only me, probably every football player, when he stopped playing, and then he see improvements going around and he's like, why didn't that happen when I was here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? And then you're like, well, it is what it is. Well, know? I'll tell you, it was a really special thing when you played for Fulham because you sort of alluded to it there. But when I was growing up, we used to talk about Johnny Haynes, George Best, all these greats that played in Fulham teams. Yeah. And Fulham up to that point, or most of the teams we've seen, are sort of committed, organised, but no like real like, unbelievable like other level universe players so when you came it was such a buzz that yeah. I, at that time I, I was partying a lot at that time I was drinking a lot and you were like and you were playing for Fulham so I'd go and watch Fulham and then in the evening I get so carried away that I get a marker pen yeah and just write Dimitar Berbatov on people's faces and uh-huh. arms like about three in the morning there needs to be some context here though like this is you bear in mind <laughs> This man like, right here. Dimitar Berbatov plays for Fulham. Yeah, this man right here was out celebrating the fact he had a number one album, you know, so it was a big deal. Number one album in the charts and he's drunkly, the way he's choosing to celebrate this number one album, the fact they're one of the biggest bands in the UK at this point, the Maccabees, is to write your name drunkenly on every one. <laughs> Which is a compliment for me, right? Yeah. I don't know if you're feeling a bit weird now, if you want me to switch seats with him. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point I'm making is like all Fulham fans. It was massive. It was like glory years, man, having you at the club. Yeah, but you know, I always saw something special in the club. And I don't know if I'm expressing myself the right way with the right words, but I always saw something special in Fulham in a way that mm. they can be even bigger club. You know, mm. and that's why I said it in, in a way that I always moaned about everybody here when I came because I'm coming from United, sure. champion and everything. I'm like, guys, we can do even more. You know, we can do even more. We can make this bigger, that bigger, you know, the stadium. Maybe you can expand and stuff like this. And now seeing all this happening and f- full on flying yeah. finally in the, in the Premier League. Yeah. It's great. Makes me regret that it didn't happen when I was here. Sure. But hey, it's happening now. And that's important. I think it's, it's, I reckon this is the perfect opportunity to touch on that whole moment when you did come to the club. Because it was such a surreal moment for, for us Fulham fans. I wasn't at the club at that point. And it was, um, hearing it was like, I think most of us went, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Why um, not? Why not? Mate, you're, you're, <coughs> you're the special one, mate. This is where clubs or people underestimate each yeah. other. Yeah. Why, why not come here? You revealed the full mindset there. This is, this is honesty and you need to, to know. That's why I'm asking people, why you didn't expect me to come? You, you have everything around here to play good football. Right. So when Martin Yo, he was asked in a, in a press conference, uh, is, 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 are you signing? Is Dimitar Berbatov signing? And you said, I'll sign if we, do champ- if we play Champions League. So we all immediately was like, oh, well, he's not signing. Oh. So was that a genuine thing? You said to Martin Yo at the time, you're like, I want Champions League. No, I never said that. I want... I want First of all, Martinho. To play he, him. He, is like, uh, he was like a dad to me when I used to play against him, yeah. uh, under him. And I know that he was going to start the team with me because this is how much he believed in my ability. Build it back around yeah. you. Yeah. And, I, and you need something like this as a, as a player to know that the coach, the gaffer, mm-hmm. believes in you. But knowing this, you don't allow for yourself your head to spin and you think you're a big deal. In my case, I always wanted not to disappoint him. You know, not to disappoint yeah. I always want to prove how good I am because he always yeah. trusted me so much. And when he said, <laughs> Berba, come play for me, you know, my boy. And I, at that point, I didn't play so much in United. You know, my yeah. confidence was a bit low. And I always, I, the only thing I wanted to do is play football again. And London, my family feel great in, in, in UK. I, I love it here. So I would say, boss. I'm there, you know. Was there an element of like loyalty to it? Because obviously when you went to Spurs, like that was the first time in Premier League, big centre-backs, like hard to get into that. And he sort of really ushered you into in a that. Way, in a way, yes, your loyalty is the right word probably because when I sense that the manager completely trusts me, I feel even more confident in myself because a player can have a bad day in the office, a bad match. He can miss an opportunity, whatever. It happens. But when you do it, 
sometimes you automatically think, oh my God, he's going to change me, he'll substitute me, I'm not going to play the next game. But in my case, I knew because Martin, you know, trust me, I can allow myself mistake here and there. Mm. And then automatically I will know that, you know, he still trusts me. Even because of that mistake, he still trusts me. Yeah. So I can, I can do better. I can do better. There's no pressure on me not to make a mistake. So with, with him, that connection is very special. And probably he was the, uh, the guy that completely trusts my ability. And when, as I said, when he said, come, come play for me again. And I needed that to play again. Just pure football, play and enjoy. Talk I'm, go on. I'm glad he did say that. And there were some really like, magical moments while you are at the cottage. The first one that springs to mind for me, I don't know about you, Ivan. Like, you scored a lot of beautiful goals, obviously. But I don't, I'd be interested to know if you remember this. Because it's the only time I've heard Craven Cottage, all of the ground, yeah. sigh. They just go, ah. It was like watching art. When the ball's pinged against Villa, I think it is from left-hand side to right-hand side in the air, and you catch it, I can still see it happening, and I can hear the ground making that sound, which I've never heard in my life otherwise. Let me ask you something. Why do you see that as so special? Why uh, do you see it? Why because do you see I can't it? do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember. Did I it, remember it that. It didn't moment. feel special to you? For me, no. Someone could just chuck it to me from, from here, and it would bounce over. Uh, do, do you know what I mean? It was just the way you... There was no bounce. Yeah, yeah. It was... It's poetry, is what it was. It was. In my mind, it's like, it just, it just stopped the ball. But I, w I would say there are some moments in sport and in football where it doesn't become about competition anymore. It's just about art and you leave feeling like cleansed. You leave feeling like you've gone to a gallery. And w when you used to do stuff like that, it didn't matter what the score was. You just felt like you'd seen something beautiful. You, yeah, you know what I take from the moments like this? What you said before you start your sentence. Ah... Uh, yeah, because exactly. I always heard the roar of the crowd yeah. when I do something special uh, and I can hear the emotions and the, and the sounds and when I hear it in my mind I'm like this is poetry you know this is this is sometimes how football should be played yeah. or things should be done the result is important of course but sometimes you need to be able to put inside moments like this so the fans knows when they came, they can see something special. Because you can win a game one nil, but the game can be boring as can I curse here? <laughs> you know, I just, I just <laughs> can be boring. As <laughs> you know, and you're <laughs> sitting there and you're almost sleeping. Yeah, you score, you win, you go home happy. But if you don't have that special moments, but it wasn't happening. Much, like you know, I'd say that we, you know, a team like Fulham, especially at that time, you got real workhorse players. You might have been sometimes referred to. Uh, as a luxury player, yeah. Do you know, like a luxury item. And, and so we were used to that kind of workhorse style, you know, everyone sort of chips into it. So to see that at the cottage oh, was just... Yeah, but to see moments like this, for me to be able to do it and to afford myself to do it, I, need, I needed player around me who are yeah, hardworking players yeah. so they can take the ball and then give it to me. Yeah, yeah. And because of them, I look good in a way, Yeah, you know? And sometimes the other way around, I make them look good. You did, you, did you see the cottage as a place where you could sort of almost show off? Because United obviously is massive and so intense and there's so much pressure. Whereas Fulham just felt, must have felt like a bit of a relief in some ways, you know, where you could just like run the... No, show. relief, no, because I always put the expectation on myself, first and foremost, to, to prove myself to me, first and foremost, that I can still play, I can still stop the ball I used to stop. And that was the most important to me. Other than that, as I said... <laughs> we had players in the team who are really, really sh strong work ethic, you know, and they are fighting with the ball all the time, you yeah, know. Yeah, Caragunis. Yeah, <laughs> different kind of. <laughs> but he was a great <laughs> guy. Hard, he was a great guy. Every time I tell him, take the ball, give it to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. to to see to see to see well. Go, you run all day long. Take the ball, give it to me, please. Sure. You know, then I can take care of it. Yeah, yeah. But you cannot do one. Um, how do you say without the without yeah, sure. the other you know you need to respect your teammates it doesn't matter how they are you know some players are hard working players they know what to do take the ball give it to the other player who have more ability did you see that that when before you joined Fulham did you see that balance did you look at the squad we had at the time and go okay yeah this will work we've got the hard working players we've got players that I, there was this rumour going around at the time as well and I, I don't know what truth there is in that that you you wanted to play with Moussa Dembele and then uh, Martin uh, Yo had to persuade you at that point that even though he had just gone we had just lost him to Spurs we still had a number of players similar was there anything in that do you remember no 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 because as I said the factor that Martino was a coach 
that I know that he's going to trust me to play from the first minute until the last. That was the, the big thing for me. Uh, not so much who was in the squad. Because intuition in my case is really important. I always lead my professional career. Uh, it was lead based on my intuition. In instinct. In in, yeah. Well, yeah. I knew. I knew what is going to work for me. And at that time, there was a choice to go to Italy. But then I chose to stay here in UK and play with Fulham. In the first season, we, we, when I was here, 15 goals. And we had, we, we had so much joy playing around. Yeah, Not joy. only on the pitch, outside the pitch as well. The, the, my teammates were a funny bunch of people, you know. When you have fun, we have fun. When you need to play, we play, you know. It, it, I had a great time, honestly. That's really good to hear that. Really good. Well, as we were looking, uh, we're doing a bit of um, sort of research. Obviously, we know all the, you know, the big stories and the big moments in your life, but we wanted sort of like to scratch beneath the surface a bit more. And we found, um, uh, do you remember Frimpong? Yes. Playing with Frimpong. And he was saying that there were moments sometimes in the dressing room you'd be drawing and you'd be drawing farms. A what? Farms? Drawing farms. His quote was he would, he would be there sketching for maybe sort of 20 minutes. You'd have a sketchbook farms. in the dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I can draw. I right. can pretty much draw whatever I want. Because when, I, when I see something, I can draw it. But I need to be in the mood for it. I need to be relaxed. My mind needs to be on that type, type of things. And when I draw, I draw it at home because I can relax and stuff like right, this. Okay. Uh, in the dressing room, maybe he was seeing me more of a private type of guy. You know, right. I didn't speak so much. Uh, I was more quiet and just observing. When I needed to speak, I will speak, trust me, when I need to say something. But most of the time, I, left some, I leave some other players to, to talk because you have different personality in the dressing room. Some players are high-fiving other all the time, making jokes around. Me, I was more observing around and, and seeing what everybody is doing. Of course, that doesn't mean that, uh, that I will not talk if you want to talk to me, give you advice or whatever, stuff like this. Because if I tell you in the United dressing room, there are some players who are more private than myself. Right. So everybody is different and you need to respect that qualities. Do you think there's um, a misconception sometimes between being shy and private and arrogant? Because yeah. I know it in other sports people where, yeah. especially very successful sports people, when they're not outgoing as well, yeah. people think they're like arrogant, holding something yeah. back. Exactly. That's, that's a wrong type of, of people to think about. If you don't know the guy, in my opinion, you cannot jump to conclusion. First, at least try to know him. Have a conversation swap some words, sentences, and then you make your conclusion around him. If you don't know him and you, and you mistake his shyness for arrogance, that's a mistake. And in my case, sometimes it happened because as I said, I was very quiet. Uh, maybe you have a bad day in your private life or whatever, you don't want to speak. You know, you just sit, you think about stuff. Other times you just don't know what to say. Oh my God, Berks, what do we say now? What, if I say that I'm going to look stupid, you know? You, just pure human things that you're going through around, around your mind. Uh, but sometimes it, exactly that happened. People maybe think that I, I was a bit arrogant. I can be arrogant if I want to, but that's not deep inside. That's not me. I was, I was trying to be more arrogant on the game uh, towards the opposition and leading with that arrogance and trying to show my teammates feed of my arrogance, get some of it, and let's be more sure of, of ourselves that we can do we can do a good result, even if you play a big team. Just go out there and play and enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny as well. Like, like you said, it, you, know, you, you were arrogant with the football and stuff, but because you were, I think at the time, there weren't ever many interviews of you. Like, yeah, we didn't yeah, see yeah. you much. You were always quite quiet and, and it, it gave you this kind of mysterious, yeah, there was a, there kind was of an enigma myth, quality to you. Totally, yeah. And so that, like, whether it's shyness or at that point, you're like, you know, the idea is like, oh, he knows what he's doing. It's like the myth of Berbatov. He doesn't speak. He... You were a myth. There was this mysterious quality around you. And then you'd get on the pitch and you'd, you know, you'd make the stadium get up on their feet and cheer or sigh or, you know, gasp. And you had these moments. Gasp. Yeah. And then, you know, and then, you know, they try to get interviews with you and we just. You yeah. You know, know, probably some of the things that I can change if I need to go back, it probably will be to be a bit more open. Uh, towards maybe my teammates when I go into the new dressing room, maybe be more open and be more saying of hi, how are you guys? Maybe high five huggings and maybe give him a bit more interviews. Maybe because the conclusion that I came up with is that sometimes, especially in this time now, some players are so out there in the, in the, how do you say, in the social medias, sure, out yeah, yeah, there, yeah. big profile, but they are not so good of a players, yeah, of yeah. football players. Yeah. Then you have 
really good football players who keep to themselves and their profile is not so big. Mm-hmm. And people tend not to think of them so much, you know? If I was more open back then, maybe my profile was a bit, a bit more like out there in the, in the space, uh, then probably my name is going to be even more bigger than, than it is. You know? yeah. do, maybe, you feel, do you feel like a different, sorry to talk over you, do you feel like a different person now your career's ended? Do you feel like you've changed anyway since being football? Well, you need to change. If, if I'm still the same guy that I was 10 years ago, that would be stupid of my side. You know? yeah. I need to constantly try to improve. And especially when I do other stuff outside of football now, and which include communicate with a lot of people and knowing how to talk, how to speak, how to behave. Uh, and of course, I'm a different. In some way, I still the same, still the same, because again, I'm not gonna let you in my private circle so easily. Mm. You know, uh, life is, is is different. Life yeah, is difficult. Sure. So I have in my mind that whoever is gonna cl- come close to my circle needs to be. Proven, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, way. I understand that. Yeah, but if, as I said, if I need to go back and change something, probably that I'll be more open-minded with my new teammates and just give more interviews, maybe because when they asked me of interview before, and I was like, just leave me to play football. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, exactly. You will understand that. <laughs> just I want to play football. Hey, leave me alone. You know? With that in mind, how do you reflect on? Because obviously, you left Fulham in January, and Yold had left as well, and then within two managerial changes, we were relegated. Yeah. Did you were you like watching from Monaco when that happened? Like, how did that feel? That must have been a difficult thing to sort of. See. It was, it was, and it it in a way I regretted how it happened because stuff was going around the club. First, Martino was fired, you know. Yeah. And when when the coach is fired, especially the coach that brought you to the club, it's always like that with football players. You uh, feel a bit empty. Yeah, yeah. Side of you is empty. Uh, and that's how I felt at that time. Uh, the club, this is the second season. Yeah. The first season was great. The second season was not so good and it ended up relegated, uh, relegation for the club. And it was not going well. Uh, maybe the, the financial part of the club needed money as well was also important. And when the club was not doing well, at that point, again, my intuition was kicking in and say, Berps, maybe it's time to, to find something new, something to challenge. And that's when the Monaco offer came to the table. And I needed to go, to be honest. Yeah. And then I was watching. And to be honest, after that, the coach came was Felix Magat. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, after yeah. that. But then Felix Magat, I think, yeah, and correct, some other yeah. coaches. And to be honest... You dodged the bullet there. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you, yeah, you, you could have been playing under Felix Magat. No, that was not going to be my thing until... No, right no, now. Yeah, no, no. It's going it to be from bad to worse, probably. Had you heard of him before? Yeah, because I play in, in, in Germany. Players talk. Tactics. Players talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know how it is and how the training was and stuff like this. And this was not my type of training and stuff like this. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, and, you know, in the end of the day, I think I made the right decision as hard as it was because yeah, it was Fulham was relegated. Uh, but that's why I'm so happy seeing what is going on because mm. this past couple of years was like this for Fulham. Going up, going yeah. down, going up, going down. Now third time is a charm, right? Yeah. So let's hope. We're going, to, we're going to surprise the big teams, as they, as they call themselves, and maybe do something special. What do you think the difference is? Why do you think, you know, we're up and down, up and down. What do you think is happening right now in this club that is, that is giving it that kind of steadiness? Well, we, we need to give credit when credit is due uh, to the manager as well. Sometimes the manager is first to take the blame when the thing is not going well. And now when the things are going well, you need to point to the manager and say, obviously, he's know he's know exactly what to do. And the team is playing good football. Mm. It's not like... Coincidence. The season before was like kids playing <laughs> men, guys. Yeah, yeah, you know, this yeah. is how I saw it. So many yeah. goals leaking in the defense, and I'm like, watching, come on, man, come on. That's the big difference. And you yeah. need to, to give credit to the manager, of course, to the players and, and to the whole club, people working around the club. And I'm pretty sure everybody's happy now. Everyone's renewing their passports in secrets, you know, making sure they're all in place. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone's ready for a European tour. I, I hope they're not thinking this is a fluke, you know? It, to be that this stage it's an in interesting the season, point. It's, that's an interesting point. Yeah, I don't know how people feel about but it. But this is the underestimated part. You know, just believe that you deserve it. Yeah. Believe that you deserve it based on the work you're doing, based on the hard promotion stuff, because coming three times from the championship, that's hard, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's hard. And you, you fully deserve what is happening now. Don't underestimate yourself and, and, and build on top of that. Talking of um, deserving it, one of the things about catching the ball on your foot, some beautiful goals. Um, one of the things you're most famous for at Fulham is... Yeah, talk you know, us through to that. Say, yeah, keep calm and pass me the ball. Yeah, you know, I was, I was, I was a bit. 
at the time. Yeah. Drunk? No, no, no. I don't know what he was angry about. Uh, uh, maybe because... There was a lot of press talking and stuff, was it? Or, maybe or, that. Or... Maybe that the result was not so good. Maybe that... I don't re even remember who we play with. Maybe the goalkeeper of the opposition was saying some right. things. Right. He's not going to score, blah, blah, blah. And I'm angry. I don't show it, but I'm angry inside myself. And I'm like, hmm. I'm going to show you. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you mouth. And I got a permanent marker. And I go, and I'm, I'm just walking around the dressing room. <laughs> this, is how, this is how good ideas are born. Yeah, yeah go on. This is how good ideas are born. Yeah. And I'm going around and I see a marker. Just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm taking the marker. And this is all come together in the, in the space of five or ten seconds. Taking the marker, walking around. In my mind, I don't know why, at that time was modern, this slogan, keep calm. And carry on. In my mind, it's like everything is coming together at that moment. And I'm heading towards the toilet when I'm thinking all, all this stuff. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, pen, keep calm. And I try to formulate it in my mind. Keep calm, keep calm, pen, go into the toilet, take my <laughs> pants off, start to take a <laughs> And I think he's still thinking. All of a sudden, I'm like, yeah. keep calm, pass me the ball. And I'm like... Who, how am I going to write it? I need to call someone here to help me. No, no, I want to be surprised. So I, I put my jersey like this, undershirt here, and I start to write it like this. Yourself? I'm just still in the Looking toilet. Down, still, so still in the toilet. Still having a way. Finish my job, but I'm still there. I don't want anybody. <laughs> anybody I don't want anybody to see me. And I'm sitting like this, so I'm concentrated. This is not my first language, right, right guys? Yeah, yeah, sure. If, sure, if sure. I write on my natural language, it's going to be easier for me yeah sure but i'm writing english so i need to be concentrated if i make, if I make a mistake yeah i need to change my shirt or whatever sure and <laughs> and you riding riding and all of a sudden burps it's time to go out <laughs> and i'm just still riding here there was a part because there was a yeah, part of me that thought maybe I can't believe a couple right. of games you had it ready to go yeah do you know what I mean? On that game, yeah, yeah, that yeah. game I scored a goal. What a beautiful story, because we're talking about the myth of Berbatov and also an art form. And what he just described then is a moment of inspiration. Didn't know I was going to come on the toilet, but that's what happens with songwriters. They're like, bang, I need to do this. No, you know, Halfway things, through a page. Yeah, sometimes people think he thought about it for weeks. Yeah, he right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wore that's the what, shirt yeah. for weeks or whatever. You know, sometimes you just came up with an idea like this. And then it, it made another feature, semi-feature in the Harlem Shake as well. Well, that's, that was funny because I never knew before that what that Harlem Shake is. No. And the boys were like, let's do that, let's do that. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And I saw it. They show me something. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going like crazy like this. You know, stuff like that. No, I, don't, I don't remember who was writing the, 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 the play from the, from the player. Someone was the director of the whole thing. Yeah. Some right. of the player was the director. I don't know who it was. So he was giving roles here and there. And like, what am I doing? Verbs, you just sit <laughs> with your expression like serious. Yeah. And you do nothing. <laughs> All right. And I say, well, I can do that. No <laughs> and I think Martin Yo was there as well. Yeah. Was he in it? yeah I didn't yeah. knew that. And, that. and when I saw the end product, I was happy to be honest. That was that was a funny clip. That that is the thing that uh, make a good team spirit. Yeah. In a way, you know? Yeah. And you can make laugh of yourself that way. But uh, I enjoy that, to be honest. I enjoy it. We have a great spirit in the team, honestly. I know we're running out of time. Can I ask one question? I yeah, you do, man. Before you we do, do it. Yeah, of course. You're in my all-time all Fulham team up front. If, if you were to pick your strike partner out of these, who would it be? Zamora, McBride, Mitrovic, yeah. or Sahar? <laughs> who are you up top with yeah but you have other very great players in the past yeah of course well we can whack Gordon Davies in there if you want yeah I do have someone in mind go on, go on. Fulham, I yeah. always love Clint Dempsey oh yeah? Clint that would have been great I always love him and I when I the second season he came back from America I think and I don't know I, I always loved when watching him for Fulham yeah the goals he scored how he yeah. played and all the stuff and I had a good time with him as well. That mutual respect was there. The players you mentioned, also great players, you know. But I don't know why in my mind jump. You described Mitrovic as a brother earlier. So, I mean, you, you stabbed a brother <laughs> in the back there. He was one of the options. No, because maybe we can be a, be a bit similar. Maybe that's not going to work out. Probably it's going to work out because you're going to skip the ball, give it to me, I'll spread it out to the wings, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like this. But the name of Dempsey just pop out when you ask me about that. And... No disrespect to the other guys, there they're is. also great, but... Love that. 
we uh, recently, obviously, the Premier League turned 30. And so we compiled our list of uh, favourite sort of 30 Premier League goals. Uh, you were in there, uh, your goal against Stoke. We wondered if you'd want to take a guess at where your, your uh, volley against Stoke would have featured in the top 30, whereabouts it would have placed. Don't ask me that because they're going to say first place. <laughs> <All right. laughs> nice and modest. But let me... Uh, no, listen, I love that goal. That's not an easy goal to take. To, first touch, isn't it? Make, first yeah. touch ping. Uh, there is no... Uh, how do you say? I, want, I don't want to be modest right now because that's a difficult goal to pull. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. The ball is dropping down. I need to observe where I am on the pitch, who is coming behind my back. If I'm going to connect the right way, you know, is it going to go in, into the net? Uh, and everything felt perfect, but I was good at volleys anyway. Do you, do you remember those moments? You can can you still see it and feel the feeling of when you hit that, that special ball? that goal specifically? I I was watching it from time to time because that was a special moment, not because of the goal. The goal made it more special because at that time Fulham was going through a difficult period. Yeah, and there was a talks of Martino being uh, sacked. So before the game. <laughs> With Martin, I always try to calm him down. I'm like, boss, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I got this. Be a bit more. Yeah. I, I try to be a mod uh, with, uh, with a sense of humor, you know, and just be like, don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> you have me, you know, <laughs> we have each other. Uh, and, and in that game, before the game, I was saying stuff like this, like, to, because I see him, you can sense when a man is tense, you know, yeah. have problems, something going into my in his mind. And I'm like, boss. Don't worry, man. Every, <laughs> no, everything we find. Oh. Bam, that goal. Yeah. And you, we can see when if you see the goals, where I'm running off to, I'm running off to him. So right, yo. You know, and while I'm running off to him, now I can see his eyes watering. Oh, you know, beautiful. because that that was important game. We won one 0 yeah. against Stoke. Talk and going in and hugging him, and he was like, bam, with his hand. That was a strong guy, Martin. <laughs> he can crush you in half. He's going like this. I'm like, I was thinking to myself, he was going to break me, man. <laughs> and other players coming into the jump. And, you know, it was a special moment. Oh. Where does it rank? Must be in top 10, though. Don't tell me he's outside of top 10. I believe. Bear in mind, bear in mind, Fulham have scored 700 goals in the Premier League. Near enough 700 goals. Uh, you were number 11. 11? You are the 11th best goal. I mean, you were almost top 10. We've had a lot of absolute screamers in the Premier League. So would you ever hazard, hazard a guess at what could be number one? Little clue is you, you were in the game. You played in the game. Mm. Guys, who do we play? South East London. I have no clue what you're talking Palace. About. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kasami's goal. Yeah. yeah. From, uh, that, was, that was unbelievable. How, uh, yeah. Even me, when I was watching... When the ball was passing to him, yeah. I don't know who gave him the ball though. Sasha Rita. Rita. So he gave him a pass. The pass was <laughs> And, and he's con he, the pass is going on and he's his no man land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like just jogging and thinking, I'm not doing anything to run forward because <laughs> he's not going to do anything with the ball. And then he's controlling it. I understand. And I'm still not thinking that he's going to do anything special. And then we control it and shoot it right away. And I'm going the ball going like this, and I'm like, he's going in. <laughs> and when he came in, and I'm like clapping myself inside, clapping to that yeah. goal, you know, because yeah. that was something special. Yeah. That yeah. was that was unbelievable goal. Fully deserved to be number one, probably. Yeah. Fully deserved to be number I'll one. I'll take that. There we go. That's that's a good choice. My goal must be in top ten though. Yeah, well maybe can we move it around? Can we drop what we drop that number ten out, switch them around? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. What it's a joy. So so good to chat. And nice to know that you remember Fulham so fondly as well. Yeah. You know? Guys, come on. I mean, I respect all my clubs. Uh, I have great memories from here. Good memories. Bad memories. Like in life, it is what it is. But overall feeling is that uh, I can always come here and be greeted with respect, with love. And that's why I came back, you know. Imitar Babata, wasn't that amazing? Unbelievable. I, do you know what? I think there was a few revelations in there. Firstly, I mean, the big one, obviously, is that I've never heard what the story behind Keep Calm and... Passing, passing the ball, the ball no. was and as, as we say to him we thought maybe he'd had that for a while because he hadn't scored for a little bit so that's the first time I've ever heard that story and it's a joy isn't it when you hear you know getting the getting the team call in the dressing room he's in the toilet writing backwards in, as he says not yeah. even in his first language oh it's brilliant man. and uh, there's another like lots of other stuff I thought it was interesting for him to say 
I imagined Fulham could be a bigger club, so mm. that he was sort of, and he's still seeing now that oh, this is what I was talking is, about. Yeah. Guys. And at one point, he slips. He says something about getting results against big teams and having that mentality. So there was quite an interesting like um, connection there between the essence of what Berbatov was imagining and where Fulham Football Club are at now. Do you know what I mean? I agree, a hundred percent. And I think you know, although we we were mentioning Europe, I think maybe perhaps getting a little bit of ahead, ahead of ourselves there. This was um, recorded a month or so back. When, well, you when mentioned f- Europe a few times I didn't actually say <laughs> oh, yeah yeah are you... <laughs> I've been true. supporting Fulham too long I, to start mentioning is it because you don't you worry about jinxing no no I just supported Fulham for long enough to know that we're not getting in Europe okay, okay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the spirit yeah, I'm like, just I'm just a proper optimist that's yeah no, I'm lovely. forever the optimist you get your passport yeah I'm like I'm like Dimmy, I'm like Dimitar Berbatov. We're optimists. Oh, the that's what we want to see. Nice. You know, he's the one shouting Europe as well. You know, from from the tops of the trees. Okay, we were maybe you know we were sick at that point. I think we'd just beaten Brighton away. Yeah, and so uh, you know it was you know definitely a, a strong possibility. Yeah, we're flying, and so you know it's still not uh, impossible. You know, but maybe for next season. Next season. Next season. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You happy to say next season Europe? Not really. No, no you're not going to say anything. You're not no, going to. No, 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 at points. what point? Would it literally? <laughs> um, but, <laughs> um, but anyway, man, who's what we got coming up? We got like, because Berbatov, because when we, we said we were doing this podcast, yeah. the first name that popped into my head was maybe we could get Berbatov. Yeah. So to get him as the first one. Unbelievable. What other Fulham legends are going to be popping up across the first series, Ivan? I mean, you know, we've obviously got some fantastic Fulham legends coming up. Uh, as well as uh, actual style like Mitrovic, who doesn't want to speak to Mitrovic, yep. unbelievable guy. Uh, William, yeah, just just a wonderful player. Uh, Sylvan Legwinski, who might have been one Poet. of the uh, the greats, literally the greats. And 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 you know, even when this pod was announced officially on Twitter, so many comments about the fact they'd spied Sylvan on the uh, the teaser video. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And whatever you think. Or whatever you hope that that interview will be, it's better. Yeah. He's incredible. It's Rachel Yankee, isn't there? Rachel Yankee's in there. Keith Allen talking about how the drummer at the cottage inspired Bindaloo and Fat Les. And yeah. About seven houses. He doesn't say that explicitly, but clearly It's did. pretty much close, yeah. yeah. Uh, Charlie and Paul Cooper. Again, which was a joy. Just an absolute <laughs> joy. <laughs> yeah, brilliant, man. And it's probably more I've forgotten. There's anyway, loads it's more, honestly. Great. It's it's and we're only just getting started. So um it it is a uh, it is fantastic. Great. It's, and an absolute honor to be doing it and with yourself as well. Um I think as well, uh, you know, a the, the little bit of uh, news came out amongst sort of Fulham fans in the last few days that Lisa Hughes passed away, who um I know you met her a, a few yeah, times. I did, yeah. I was lucky enough to to, you know, pretty much every week at Fulham I'd see her whether it was in McBride's or she would have myself and my dad up to to the box where she she they, they always had a box her and her husband and uh, yeah sadly she's passed away and genuinely hand on heart she's she's one of the loveliest people and so yeah I think it's just only right to to dedicate um the pod to to Lisa and you know and and uh, obviously had a lovely um uh, a lovely moment for her today at the Manchester City game um, and uh, yeah, she will be massively missed. I think anyone that went away with Fulham or at the cottage would have come across Lisa mm. at least a few times, wouldn't they? Definitely. And, um, yeah, absolutely. That was a beautiful moment. Ivan, we're going to be doing this once a week, aren't we, to the end of the season? So every Tuesday indeed. there's going to be episodes. Yeah. Um, and they're going to, like I say, they're all with Fulham legends, all talking really candidly, all saying things that we haven't heard before. I'm so buzzed to be doing it. And uh, yeah, I think, do you know what? I don't think our season's over quite yet. I think there's a few more twists no, and turns so, yeah. to come from the mighty Fulham. Right. And on that note. On to Leicester. On to Leicester. <laughs> <laughs>